I can make you turn. I'm guess. making you turn. I still have about 10,000 polybag comics that I've refused to get rid of. And every time. Oh, the Pelican logo in the park. Turn right. Then turn right onto Pelican Plutz. I'm a comic book movie would be right made. Oh, right here. Yeah. Oh. In my younger years, oh. because they were not done generally very well, okay. I would Take a picture sort of, of that thing on the right. On the right. A crack in what my fingers this? to I got it. How right here too. I got it. And you got it, was, it? it was always uh, very stressful for me because I had so much invested. Uh, in All right, I gotta menu to turn this off because I'm gonna turn right onto on Paley Con Platz. The first stop on Goldspot's tour of Germany is in the city of Hanover, the home of Pelican since 1838. What makes this hotel special to pen enthusiasts? Let's check in with Sal to give us a quick tour. So what's it really like to sleep in an old Pelican pen factory? We came all the way to Germany to find out. Let's go. This independently owned Sheraton repurposed the old Pelican factory into a hotel with four floors, 133 rooms, 14 suites, seven meeting rooms, a fitness center, an American-themed restaurant and cocktail bar. The interior design pays homage to the building's history. We are now in the main lobby, an expansive space with a modern German style. The artwork on the walls depict popular models of Pelican pens, and a small display of pens for sale can be found next to the reception desk. Making our way to the room, we see a continuation of the modern design, with more historical photographs of the Pelican factory on display in the stairwell. We open the room by touching a key card to the door lock and enter the classic guest room with a floor to ceiling window and another Pelican fountain pen artwork on the headboard of the bed. The beds are comfy, the room's clean, and the shower's hot. To find out more about this historical building and its connection with the modern Pelican company, let's talk to Jens Meyer, Pelican's global marketing manager. Hello. 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 Hi, Sam. Had a nice walk? Yeah, cool. Yes. Just finished a, a little hotel tour and uh, okay. a room. And I understand you guys have some stuff to show us. Okay. So excited I'll about show that. You. So tell us about the building and, uh, and about Pelican. Okay. So basically, these are the, this is the, the first part of the building, which was built in 1905. So up to that, that part. And then anything that goes beyond in this direction is right. the second part. So the white windows, where are the white windows is from 19. In fact, this was like the end of the building. Okay. And anything that then was built in this direction was added to the building about uh, eight or nine years later, so I think. In the red brick. And that's how the square uh, okay. came up. Very cool. In this area where we now have the Tintenturm, which is the, the archives, mm -hmm. the historical hall and the shop, there used to be the ink production in this area, not exactly in this, because ink, Tintenturm means ink tower. Okay. So um, the ink production was in that area, and around the, the whole building you have uh, different uh, street names which are all related to Pelican. So you have Pelican Street, you have Günther Wagner Allee, Tintengraben, which means uh, it was the place where um, the 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 ink yeah, people still recall that uh, at a time uh, there was like a little not a, not a, a river but there was some some water in a in a oh wow like I don't a know stream how you call yeah yeah not stream and it was coming from the ink production <laughs> so it was having different colors depending on which ink was <laughs> currently being produced I mean what this was in the very very old days mm -hmm. of course uh, 
this wouldn't happen like this today. So everything somehow is related to Pelican and the production and the history in this area. Yes. It's called the Pelican Quarter and anything you find here, whether it's a pharmacy or um, any other place, they all carry the name Pelican in yes, their... As we see in their, their uh, yeah, and this was named right Pelican here. Platz, correct, yes. yeah. They display some of our products, they offer or they explain to people coming to the hotel that they can go to the museum here, there's a shop. Uh, they also inform about the Make-A-Wish nib. When people come from abroad to right. um, go to have the Make-A-Wish nib at the factory, usually we offer them that they can come the, the day before, they stay at the hotel here, right. they get a, a little better rate, and then they go to the factory the next day. Right. You'd also mentioned uh, that the Pelican was here as recent as 1996. Um, the, for the offices? F yeah, for the offices even until 2004. Okay. And then uh, the offices moved to the new place, and it was in, in mainly in, in this area, the offices. So my office was on the other side, on of one building. of the very first uh, rooms. Uh, how about uh, the factory and production? Um, when did they start and when did they end it, this compound? I think they, they started to move production from here to Führung, where we've been yesterday, um, in 1975. Okay. Um, and then there was a time in the early 90s, I think 92, that Pelican acquired Geha, which was one of the main competitors in the school and office business right. in, in Germany. And Geha used to be only another two or three kilometers down the street. So on the street you had Pelican and then you had Geha, two major competitors, especially for, for school fountain right. pens. So when you were going to school, like I did in, in the late 70s, early 80s, right. the, the primary school, you either had a Pelican fountain pen or a Geha okay. fountain pen. That was the, the, the only option wow. you had at that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so and Pelican acquired Geha, then they moved some of the production from here to the Geha uh, uh, premises down the street, and then they moved everything to uh, Föhrum because you have more space there and a newer factory, newer factory was and it was, was really on one level because here you had different levels yeah. uh, which made it really difficult. It What's interesting happy. here for example so that's an old stone and what's interesting here you can see for the probably one of the very first times the Pelican logo so you see the mother bird and you see the chicks at that time still three chicks because uh, that was the family crest of Günther Wagner but when he went to register the patent, he knew that his wife was about to give birth to his fourth child. And that's why he added the fourth chick oh, wow. in, in the logo to register as, <laughs> as, as, it's, as, as the trademark. So the original logo was the bird with only three. Most of the building is under, under monument protection. The same goes for the, the historical hall, which we um, now are using for, as a museum right. and, and a shop. So you cannot really do big changes to the room. Anything that you do, uh, you have to ask for permission first. Mm -hmm. and, and here, that's the old entrance. When I started working at Pelican, mm -hmm. this was the entrance to the offices. And you can see through the windows, there's an old wooden staircase uh, and wooden panels on the wall. In the old times, that was the entrance to the Pelican factory area. So th there was also like an arc. Right. that you could enter here and here you had like you still see the statue and this used to be a spring or um, and there were pelican birds uh, living here so this stopped I don't know in the 60s or 70s now there we have the uh, Hanover Zoo which is not far away from here right. it's just behind the, the city forest we are like a, a parent or sponsor of the of the pelican birds so we we give money to the zoo to feed the pelican birds over the year. I don't know, you remember the Majesty series, the pens? Yes. We had? So if you look up to this white, um, I don't know how you call this in English, but you know on the Majesty pen there was, it was a silver pen and then there was a golden band at the top yes. having some engravings. And this was taken from these parts of the building here. So my office used to be over there. The, the, the last one before the, the wall is coming on mm -hmm. the, it's the third floor from the, the lower part now. Wow. How long were you there for? Three or four years. And then, until the, the, uh, new and then we moved to the new, new office, yeah. This is the entrance to the Tintenturm. We 
inaugurated this uh, in 2018. Um, so we Pelican partly moved back to the old Pelican building. Uh, so it was quite important for us going back to our roots. It was important for the area here. Also the, the, the owner of the building said it would be nice if Pelican is coming back to the area because yeah. then it's giving the much more value and much more story to the yeah. whole area. And we decided to use it on the one hand to have the historical hall which we are now using for meetings but we are also um, having lectures from time to time so we are asking German authors to come here and to give a, a lecture of, of, a, of their book or to hold a just a, a speech uh, yes yeah. correct we have exhibitions in there we're working together with the university here so students can have exhibitions here or we also looking for other uh, other opportunities uh, we're having our internal meetings from time to time here then there's the the shop when we walk up here we will see there's a new shop that we created uh, which is open to the public and we also have um, the archives where we keep all the treasures of the past and um, have all the old check out in a moment. products and uh, signages and so on Check out the Tintent Term, the historical photo exhibition, and the Pelican archives in our next episode that goes deeper into the history of this 180-year-old German manufacturer of writing instruments. And as always, stay inky, my friends. Take care. <laughs>